Great day for a drive. We're going to go check out a cool old Studebaker. Studebaker pickup truck. Uh, we met this guy actually at a garage sale. He had an old Jeep he's working on and I showed some interest in that and then he opened up the doors to his garage and hiding in there was a really cool old Studebaker. Hello there. Well, we caught Gary working on his 80s El Camino doing some body work, which is definitely a uh, subject for another video. Um, and he was happy to show us what we came to see, his 1961 Studebaker Champ pickup truck. These are really cool old trucks, and Gary has owned his for probably 45 years since the mid-70s. Audio was pretty bad in the shop with our masks on and radio blaring, yeah, the exhaust fan going, but it was a great visit. Uh, Gary gave me a pretty good history lesson on Studebakers and shared a lot of details about his truck that I'll try to share in this video. Right now he is waiting on some new bias ply rubber from Coker Tire that he's going to throw on these original rims. Coker makes all sorts of really cool tires for vintage vehicles, classic cars, military. It'll be really cool to see what Gary puts on this thing. And then hopefully he has it on the road in the spring. While we're at floor level here, we can talk about the suspension. Gary has done a great job underneath this truck, basically restoring or replacing what looks like every piece of suspension, the axles, everything else under here. A neat thing he pointed out was that it has... A solid axle up front um, and leaf springs front and rear. Pretty old school for even the 60s when I guess the competition at that time at least had independent front suspension on their two-wheel drives and uh, yeah torsion bar and coil spring setups. While Champs being produced with suspension similar to trucks 10 years older in efforts to keep costs down and sale prices nice and low for the consumers. Gary's actually restored this truck a couple times since he's owned it in the 70s, which is why the sheet metal looks as good as it does. And speaking of the sheet metal, he pointed out that the Champ's cab was derived from the front half of a Studebaker Lark sedan, and also used the Lark's dash inside, and the grill, uh, or the grill area, I guess. A chunky four-bar grill was substituted for the Lark's more delicate mesh grill, uh, and the lower half uh, was unique to the truck. There's a stamped recess on the front of the uh, truck where the Lark's bumper uh, would have kind of fit more nicely. And you can see the bumper on the truck is a lot lower because the frame sits a lot lower. Since we're right at the front here, uh, Gary mentioned that this truck has the larger 289 uh, V8 engine. Uh, I think he said it originally came with a 259 and he ended up swapping it out to this one probably for a little more power. Pretty nice under the under the hood here and uh, he's done a lot of detailing and could use a cleanup but uh, I'm sure he'll do that when he gets to it in the spring. Something else that's pretty cool about this truck is the three-speed manual transmission. It has overdrive option with it uh, so basically when you're in second or third gear you can put it into overdrive basically once you get up to 30 miles an hour it is I think uh, you can take your foot off the gas and the transmission will automatically go into an overdrive mode and let you continue um, at a nice uh, higher gear down the highway the box on this one is the step side version with the external wheel wells pretty cool uh, rock guard protectors on the front there and a bit of a flare around the wheel. Tailgate's in great shape on this thing too, uh, almost like new. 
The other box that was available on these trucks was actually an old Dodge fleet side box that Studebaker called the Space Side. It didn't fit that well compared to the cab, but I think it gave it a bit of an industrial appearance, which is good considering the cab for this truck was based on a car. And here Gary's showing me where the gas tank's mounted in this truck. It's uh, between the frame rails underneath the truck, looking at the gas nozzle on the side of the cab you'd think it's behind the back seat where a lot of the gas tanks were in the late 60s early 70s in the Chevys and, and Fords uh, but yet yeah, no it's behind the seat right here you can see the the tube going down underneath the truck he's also got a uh, panel mounted back there where he has tools hung and things like that uh, one of the only custom things he's really done to the truck is adding that sedan seat with the fold forward backs on it so he has access to his tools. That's about it for footage at the shop. Uh, fortunately Gary was nice enough to send us some pictures and a bit more history on the truck after we left the shop that day. Some of the pictures showcase that rear slider window that Studebaker offered at the time. Pretty neat option. Uh, Gary's truck has that. Uh, so the other pictures go back as far as the 70s with his first restoration and those uh, new fenders he had to put on it. Second restoration uh, a few years later after his son had laid the truck on its side and had to replace those fenders again. This has to be my favorite picture though. Shows them loading up a one ton Studebaker to take it away to be restored. Gary's had this truck for 40 or 45 years and the majority of the time he's owned it, they, it was a daily driver. They used it for hauling cars all the way from Minnesota to Western Canada. He's a member of the Studebaker Drivers Club, which is obviously a huge resource of uh, other owners and drivers that have parts for these vehicles, so it's really helped him keep it on the road. And he mentioned that anyone else out there that's restoring a Studebaker or even owns one is encouraged to join their local club, take advantage of the other members and the knowledge they have and maybe the parts they've got sitting in their garage. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot to Gary for letting us into his shop, showing us around, giving us a lesson on Studebakers, uh, getting into some details on that old truck uh, and some history on it. That was really cool. Uh, we'll definitely visit Gary again in the spring and see that thing when it's on the road. Please like, subscribe, hit notifications, share the video if you think your friends will like it as well. And thank you very much for watching.